Many months ago, I started a project on my big block Suburban, and now we are finally getting around to actually finishing the job. Actually, it's kind of two phases of the same job, and it all kind of revolves around the axles, the brakes, and the suspension. So today, we're going to be finishing up, we're going to be upgrading and rebuilding the front end of the Suburban, but we're doing something really special on the brakes, which I think you guys are going to like. So let me get you caught up. Back in April or May, we swapped out the original 14 bolt full floater in favor of a Dana 70 Super from a, it's like a 04, 05 Chevy Express van. Now the reason I did that mainly was for looks because the rear axle normally is about five inches narrower than the track width up front on these K2500 trucks. And I just could not stand how it looked. So I swapped out for the wider axle, but we also gained a limited slip differential and rear disc brakes, which before we had rear drums and an open 410 differential. So uh, I love how the truck looks. It still drives exactly the same. It doesn't turn weird or anything like that. It has better traction now that we have a limited slip and it stops better because we have disc brakes out back. But on the front, it's high mileage, worn out, sloppy stock components. So today it's time to address that. We're gonna rebuild the front suspension to match the rear. That's now all nice and brand new. But along the way, we're also gonna be upgrading to much bigger and much beefier disc brakes that kind of match the rear. Now, when it comes to brake upgrades on the GMT 400 trucks, you really don't have a lot of options, especially in the eight lug 2500 range. The half tons, yeah, they have some big brake kits, but there's really nothing to speak of for if you look in the GMT 400 section of the parts store. But if you kind of expand your search to the GMT 800 stuff, there are actually quite a few brake options that are a lot better than the single piston calipers that you normally get on the front end of one of these trucks. Uh, it's not a direct bolt on. We are going to need to do a little bit of custom work. We're going to have to mix and match parts. And it all kind of revolves around this spindle right here. This is actually what allows us to basically run GMT 800 brakes on a GMT 400 truck. So uh, I bought all this stuff like way, way many months ago. I think it was actually like late August. I bought all the stuff I'd intended to start it sooner, but the Stepside project came along. I just had to jump on that. I wanted to buy it right away. And so as projects do, this one did get back burnered. But let me show you real quick kind of all the parts that we're going to be putting on here. We've got some control arms, we got some uh, more control arms, we got brakes, we got a million little, you know, fasteners, things like that, clips, hoses, a master cylinder, uh, bolts, brake pads, rotors, hubs, basically everything is going to be replaced on the front end of this truck. So um, I will go over all of the specifics on what we're going to be changing out to update the brakes to GMT 800 stuff. But first, we got to get some tear down done. So we'll get the front end up of the air and completely disassemble. All right, guys, teardown is done. Everything went pretty straightforward. Really, the only thing that was kind of a hang up 
Um, I was able to work around it, but the torsion bar would not come out of the uh, torsion bar key. So instead of actually removing the torsion bar from the truck, I just kind of left it in place and wiggled the lower control arm out. Not a huge deal, it actually came out pretty easily. So um, just kind of keep that in mind. Those can be rusted in pretty good, like this one, like I said, the other end of the bar into the key. It is stuck, so we're just gonna leave it. Not a big deal. Um, other than that, I left the caliper just kind of hanging. It is sitting on the ground, but the line is stretched almost tight, uh, just so I don't have brake fluid leaking out. And I also wanted to show you guys this. Um, this sway bar end link was actually broken off in the truck already, so that would explain some of the loose handling I was experiencing. And I haven't touched anything in the steering yet. I'm leaving the stock tie rods in place, and I'll get to that in just a second. But if you remember, the main objective that we're trying to accomplish here is upgrading the brakes by installing GMT 800 2500 HD uh, rotor and caliper because it has a twin piston design and it'll give you much better stopping power and the pads are larger. It's just a better braking system overall and parts are probably more available on the aftermarket to replace them or upgrade them even further if I wanted to. But anyway, to get GMT 800 brakes on a GMT 400, you have to have a GMT 800 spindle. So I went to a junkyard and this is what I grabbed. This is a 2500 light duty spindle. And these were used between two, uh, sorry, 1999 and 2000 in a Chevy or a GMC 2500 light duty. Um, the 1500 HD was different. The 2500 HD was slightly different. Uh, but the two things that you want to grab if you're going to try to accomplish this 2500 light duty or 2500 heavy duty spindle so i grabbed the light duty version and the reason why i did that is because the taper for the tie rod right here will work perfectly with the tie rod that i have the stock tie rod on the gmt 400 k 2500 so uh, there's three connections, the tie rod, that's super simple. Um, if you do grab a 2500 HD spindle, you will have to get creative on this one. I think the taper is larger, but I know some guys have actually used like mixed and matched um, inner and outer tie rods and there's like a little adapter sleeve. I didn't want to mess with that. So that's why I found a 2500 light duty spindle. They are a little bit harder to find, but they're out there. So um, once again, 2001 to 2010, 2500 HD spindle will work, or 1999 and 2000, 2500 light duty. That's the one that I grabbed. Um, so that's one of the three attachment points. The upper, um, we're using a stock K2500 upper control arm. So this is the same exact arm as we pulled off, except you know this one is brand new with nice bushings and a new ball joint and it's painted up where that one is old. Although uh, if your upper control arms are in good shape, you can reuse them, not a big deal. You do though, however, and this applies to both the light duty and, 20, the light duty and HD 2500 knuckles, you will have to ream the upper ball joint to a larger size. So to do that, Pretty simple, I considered sending it off to a machine shop, but um, instead I just went to Speedway Motors and I picked up a two inch per foot reamer. So you can get these for like 80 or 90 bucks. Here's what it looks like. Here is the part number right there. And it has these nice spiral flutes, so it cuts a nice hole in the cast iron knuckle. Um, once again, that's the part number, Speedway Motors, about a hundred bucks. So I just chucked it up in the drill, put the spindle in the vise, and I oversized this guy here and I just did a little bit at a time and I kind of checked the fitment on the ball joint until I made sure that the threads would engage all the way. Now let's talk about the lower ball joint, getting it into a 2500 spindle. Once again, this is the same thing for a HD or a light duty. Um, if you want to use your stock GMT 400 lower control arms, you can do it, but you have to ream the lower ball joint in the same way that you did the upper. However, the problem with doing that is because well, if you kind of draw a straight line from this ball or the ream, the tapered hole, excuse me, it goes right through here. And there's really no good way to get a drill in there to run that reamer and to oversize this lower um, thing right here. I've seen some guys do it, but the other problem that you have trying to fit a stock K2500 lower control arm slash ball joint into a GMT 800 spindle is that the spacing will be up just a little bit too high. And I think you, um, for some reason, something interfered with the CV axle that was coming through. So instead of doing that, instead of trying to ream the bottom, which is inaccessible, I just grabbed a GMT 800 2500 lower control arm. And if I remember correctly from my research, this lower control arm here is actually the same between a light duty and a heavy duty 
2500 of a GMT 400 platform. And the nice thing is this will actually bolt directly into the Suburban. The spacing for the lower uh, uh, control arm mounts is exactly the same. Uh, the same width, same spacing, everything will bolt right in. And it's almost kind of like the same exact arm, you know, same spot for the sway bar, same spot for the shock, except it accepts a correct ball joint that'll interface directly into this GMT 800 spindle. So. That's kind of the gist of it. Um, GMT 800 lower control arm, GMT 400 stock upper control arm, reamed upper ball joint on a stock 2500 light duty spindle. Then now I can easily just bolt up GMT 800 hubs, brakes, and everything, which we'll get to that in just a second. But first, um, I do want to clean up these spindles. I'll just kind of hit them with a wire wheel real quick. Quick splash of spray paint, and then we can finally get to put this thing back together with updated modern brakes. All right, so I pretty much have all the suspension put back together. Everything is torqued down. I got the cotter pins in, all the castle nuts and stuff like that. And we're pretty much ready to move on to the brakes. This is really the meat and potatoes of the conversion, why we're messing around with it. But, you know, it is nice to have a completely brand new rebuilt front suspension as well. Uh, a couple of quick notes worth mentioning on the shock. Uh, two things, the lower shock mount on the GMT 800 uh, is a much narrower mount. So I actually just trimmed the bushing on the bottom of the shock. Um, so there's a steel insert in there. You can see I just kind of trimmed it back, kind of flush with the rubber and that fit in the new lower mount. I did try to actually swap out the lower mount from the GMT 400, but the bolt spacing is off and the GMT 800 is wider. So we'd pretty much have to notch those clean through. So this isn't gonna work, but not a big deal. I just cut off the ends of the bushing, everything fit. The other thing I did on the shock is you can see this plate right here that the uh, bump stop attaches to. I just kind of barely ground away that top corner right there. Not the frame mount, but just that little uh, steel plate on the bump stop. I just trimmed it a little bit because it did get kind of close to the shock, but I cycled the suspension up and down. We have plenty of clearance. Uh, I did also have to remove this little steel. It's like a dust shield almost from the end of the CV axle because this kind of interfered with the spindle, but uh, that's just kind of pressed on. So a couple quick hits with a chisel and that came off. And now the original GMT 400 CV axle fits perfectly in the GMT 800 wheel bearing and hub assembly. Um, the, I do want to point something out on this upper ball joint right here. Um, when I was reading on the internet about guys who were doing this conversion, um, I did see someone who used a 2500 HD knuckle on a stock um, GMT 400 lower control arm, which means they had to remount the lower ball joint hole. And they said that they had problems. They actually cracked a ball joint and it kind of, I remembered that and I was kind of thinking about it. Like why in the heck would that happen? 
And then it occurred to me because I think I almost made the same mistake. Let me kind of show you what I'm talking about. I have, I fixed it and I think we're going to be in the clear now, but um, when you are reaming it, remember I only had to do one hole. Um, you got to make sure you are perpendicular to the bottom face where the nut uh, basically rides when you are reaming out this hole here. And basically what I did last time, I just kind of clamped this in the vise, ran the reamer down through it, just kind of tried to keep as straight as possible. But I was actually a little bit off when I ran the reamer through, it kind of ended up walking at a little bit of an angle and I looked and when I just barely started to tighten the nut, it would make contact on one side before it did the other. There's a little bit of a gap here. So um, I did have to correct it. Basically, I, I hated having to do this, but I just kind of put the reamer at a little bit of an angle and reamed in a little bit further, which meant I had to put a washer underneath here in order to get the correct engagement with the cotter pin and the castle nut. There was enough threads. Uh, but the other thing is this distance here is actually a lot thinner on the GMT 800 knuckles than it is. I'll show you on the GMT 400 knuckles. These are like way, way beefy. This thing here is massive. Um, so anyway, instead of having the thickness all be of the knuckle, remember the GMT 800 is a little thinner and a spacer in there kind of seemed to get everything locked down in place. So all the suspension is tightened up. Um, I didn't do anything with the steering. I'm just reusing the original parts for now. These seem fairly tight. Yeah, they're kind of rusty, but uh, at some point I was planning on redoing all the steering, but I'll just do that all at once. At least now this will just kind of get me back on the road. And the only thing I haven't tightened up fully is the uh, sway bar end link right here. I'll just wait until I get both sides done. That'll just make installation a lot easier. Uh, note on the ABS. It has the same exact connector right here, so it'll plug into your factory ABS wiring, so that will still work like it should. Um, and finally, the calipers and brackets. I bought this kit from, actually everything came from Rock Auto. I did have to paint these because they were like a, a silver color and they didn't match, so I painted these just with a satin black to match the rear calipers, so that's taken care of. Um, and what else? Got the new rotors and pads there. And you can just kind of see a quick visual comparison between the two. Where's my other pad? That's over here, I guess. Uh, but anyway, new brake pad here. This is the old brake pad there. So you can see how much more surface area there is to actually bring this truck to a stop. The rotors, believe it or not, they're like the same exact size, just the pads are much bigger and the calipers have two pistons. So. That's where we're at. Everything, I think the paint's dry, so we'll just get the front slammed together, and then we're almost done. flex hose would be free of interference. So 
Um, really, really frustrated, but I finally figured out if you put GMT 800 four wheel drive, half ton front brake flex hoses on there measured at 27 inches, which is like right in the sweet spot. So last night I went to O'Reilly's, I grabbed a pair of front uh, brake flex hoses for a Z71, you know, half ton four wheel drive truck. And I got them all routed up. I only had to do a few minor, minor tweaks to them, you know, adjusting where the little uh, clamp things were in the middle of the flex hose. Uh, and then when I went to put it on this morning, I realized it's the wrong freaking fitting size. So back to O'Reilly's again, I grabbed the right thing this time. Um, it is this little guy right here. That's what I need to adapt the GMT 800 flex hoses onto the GMT 400 truck. So I made like 80 trips to the parts store during this whole thing to try to figure out, but I think we finally got it nailed. So I'll get back to the shop, put this on and you guys get to check it out all done. All right, we just got back from O'Reilly's and got the little adapter in there, which means this conversion is officially done and we have functioning GMT 800 2500 HD brakes on our GMT 400 2500 Suburban. Um, on the upper brake line, remember I did use a half ton four wheel drive GMT 800 upper brake hose that works perfectly here. Uh, flexes around all this stuff without hitting. Um, there's a gap there, so it doesn't rub on that. Uh, it bolts right here to the upper part of the spindle because that's how the GMT 800 trucks are. Uh, the only modifications I had to do, there's two of them. One is this adapter here that is a 3 16 to quarter uh, brake line adapter, the little brake tab here that's in the stock location and the hose is routed in a stock configuration. Uh, the only other thing I had to do, you might notice there's a hose clamp on here. Uh, that's because this bracket normally just bolts to the upper control arm on a GMT 800, but I didn't want to drill a hole or weld anything onto the stock GMT 400 upper control arm. So instead what I did, um, let's see, where are we at? Oh, right here. If you, I drilled a couple of holes and I had a little tiny file. So I basically made a slot in here and I just took this hose clamp and I went around there to secure it to the control arm in the same kind of way that the GMT 800 stuff does. So I have the same amount of like flex right through here. So when you turn the wheel back and forth, everything will turn like it's supposed to. I cycled the suspension up. I made sure that it didn't interfere with the sway bar end link or uh, like, so the longer brake hose, the 2500 HD one, uh, whenever you turn to the left, the brake hose kind of bunched out here and it would actually rub on the wheel, which is definitely a no-no. Uh, if you're working on brakes, guys, just pay extra attention, especially if you're doing like a conversion like this. If you're just doing stock replacement stuff, usually it'll bolt right in and you don't have to worry about it. But because we're doing a conversion, we're mixing and matching parts. You definitely want to make sure nothing is going to rub on those rubber brake hoses because they're rubber. They're probably a little bit sensitive. And if something pinches or rubs in it, um, it will leak and you'll have major trouble on your hands. That's a safety issue. So pay extra attention, take the extra time just to make sure everything works out. But anyway, um, <clears throat> in summary, here's everything that I had to do to get these GMT 800 2500 HD brakes on this GMT 400 truck. Uh, starting at the top, we have a brand new shock. That's just stock GMT 400 stuff. Although I did have to modify the lower bushing to make it a little narrower to fit into the different control arms. Now you don't have to use 2500 HD control arms like I did, but if you do, it'll make your life a whole lot easier on this lower ball joint hole. And you have a nice factory connection there, factory ball joint, factory ream. So everything's going to fit perfectly on the upper one, uh, regardless of which spindle you get the light duty or the heavy duty 2500, you will have to ream this out. Uh, just pay attention and make sure you ream it as straight as possible. So it is perpendicular to the bottom face of the spindle. Um, because I used light duty three quarter ton knuckles, my stock GMT 400 tie rod will fit right in. No problem. That's kind of really one thing that made this job easier. As far as brakes go, you obviously need GMT 800, 2500 HD brakes. I think they're the same as the light duty, but we have a rotor caliper bracket caliper itself pads, the little metal slider thingies in there, uh, the bolts to attach the caliper bracket. I also did grab the little dust cover that's going to go in here, but I'm going to wait to put that on because I want to put the tire on, put the truck on the ground. I'll torque this axle nut by hand, not with the impact. Then I'll put the dust cover on. 
Um, what else? Uh, sway bar end links, those were broken, so I got new just stock GMT 400 sway bar end links, and I think that's pretty much a wrap for this conversion. Uh, we do need to bleed the brakes, and I do need to swap out the master cylinder. A lot of guys, if you have a vacuum booster GMT 400, you can put a GMT 800 master cylinder on that with just using one line adapter. But if you have a GMT 400 Hydro Boost, you cannot do that, they won't fit. But I picked up a GMT 400 C 3500 HD master cylinder that came from a four wheel disc brake trucks and the 3500 HDs, those are the straight axle 10 lug, you know, medium duty, it's like a ton and a quarter truck. Um, so that's the master cylinder I grabbed that'll work with this four wheel disc brake setup. So that's a wrap for this video. I do wanna say thank you guys for watching. Uh, let me know how you feel about suburban content about this GMT 400 platform. We've done quite a bit to this truck already, but I'm kind of at a crossroads on and I'm trying to decide what to do. So if you guys do like this uh, truck or this year of trucks, let me know. I have a few things I might decide to do. I don't know yet, I'm, I'm up in the air. But either way, please help me out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Click the like button, drop a comment down below. All those things, they genuinely do help the video's performance. Uh, so that's a wrap. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you soon.